Hello, people. So, welcome back to another playthrough by your good friend Chad Marco. So, this time we're playing Resident Evil 2. Well, not Resident Evil 2. <laughs> Resident Evil Outbreak Foul 2. I did a Resident Evil Outbreak Foul 1 playthrough a while ago, so I decided to do this. But I got to warn you guys, I'm playing this one on an emulator on my new computer. So, this is kind of like a test, a test run of just trying to do a playthrough on this new computer. So I apologize if there are any <laughs> graphical errors, glitches, bugs. Um, I have to figure out step by step how I'm going to be doing videos like this on this new PC. So I hope you guys are patient with me in the process of trying to just figure out, okay, what's the best way for me to set up my OBS and all that. So, uh, but I've already done quite a few tests. It took a while for me to really get get it uh to an acceptable level as far as the recordings so i'm confident that i should be able to finish this playthrough without too many problems but again you know the thing about emulators is sometimes you just you don't know how different parts of a game might run on the emulator because i've noticed like certain environments look perfectly fine and then there were some where there was some screen tearing there were some areas where I noticed the shadows were kind of weird, you know. That's why again, I'm not I'm not really big on like gaming on emulators with like with the later consoles. I feel like like PS1 era and and below that is fine, but once you hit like PS2, it becomes more difficult to properly emulate um, mini games consistently. I've been doing different experiments, and I've noticed like some games come out the box running perfectly or near you know to, to a, a good you know a good a good extent and then some are just like my god <laughs> but we're gonna figure this out now the thing is i've never beaten resident evil outbreak valve 2 I had it years ago, but I never beat it. Now, this was one that gave me a lot of trouble. You know, when I was when I was a kid, I was never much good at these games, but I think even with this one, I was only able to beat like one scenario, which was the first one. So in case you guys don't know, Resident Evil that the Resident Evil Outbreak games are a bit different because the whole premise of it is that you're not using the main heroic super characters from the uh, you know the, the mainline games like Chris, Jill, Claire, Leon, etc. The premise here is that the characters that you use are like everyday people who were trying to survive the outbreak in Raccoon City. But what's cool about it is that, you know, they got a, a, a nice cast and they all have like their different pros and cons. Just like what you would see in like Resident Evil 1 or 2, right? Where Chris had more health than Jill, but Jill had more item space. You see the same thing here. It's quite varied, actually. Let me turn the volume down a little bit, actually. Okay. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining the game, but um, basically the game is separated into scenarios. Now, I'm kind of confused though because the first game had five, but this one has four and a training ground. Kind of disappointing to be honest. <laughs> I feel like they probably got lazy with that. I mean, they could at least just put the the first scenario back in, right? Instead of like the limited training ground, but whatever, you know. But yeah, the game is separated into scenarios instead of just being played straight through. 
And I don't know exactly how long each scenario is. You know, some are long. Typically, the, the further you go into it, they're longer. But it's very cool because, you know, you got the different characters and their different pros and cons. And it's, it's, it's always interesting seeing, like, what character and their particular quirks allows them to get through a scenario easier than the rest, right? But yeah, uh, between the characters, you got differences like like HP, right? Like, of course, the men tend to have more HP than the women. Um, running speed is different. They have, like, different special actions. Like, he can kick. He can play dead. They start with, like, different items. Like, he has, like, a toolbox or, like, a tool belt. She has a stun gun and a lock pick. She has uh, extra carrying space. Because she has a book bag. Uh, and she comes with like a herb kit. He comes with a gun. He does too. And uh, he can like hold the aim. And then if you hold it long enough, it'll do like a, a, a critical shot. A critical, a critical hit every time. But yeah, I'm not going to go too much into detail about the differences. We'll just figure it out as we go along. So I'll probably just play a different character for each scenario. But if I die, then I'll just go and use a different character or something like that. So, like, if I use Kevin and I die on scenario one, then I might switch to Mark or Cindy or something like that my second time through. Because I do predict that I'm going to have some issues with the later scenarios. And because from what I rem remember playing Outbreak File 1 was that a lot of times I would start a scenario with, uh, with one character, but then I wouldn't be able to finish it because, you know, just trying to figure out how to get through it, you know, just get, you just get worn down and you end up dying or run out of time. And so I just, I'll approach it again with another character and I'll find it easier to get through the scenario until I eventually complete it. That's basically how I tend to play it. So who are we gonna use the first time? I've already beaten this scenario with Cindy and Yoko, I think, you know, while I was doing my test. So I want to switch it up a bit. I think I might go with, um, Hmm. Yes. Let's go with Kevin. And the cool thing about this game, unlike the other one, is that you can choose your partners. I'm pretty sure the other one didn't allow you allow you to do that. I think in the other one, your partners were automatically selected for you. Don't quote me on that, but I could have sworn that's that's the difference. Is that you can actually choose who you come who comes with you in this one. So. I think uh, I'll bring Alyssa. Yes. I love Alyssa. <laughs> and um, let's see, Alyssa and David. Yeah. I'm going to play on normal. Wow, thing. So the scenario here is that you're at the zoo. <laughs> basically look at a gorilla you know surviving in raccoon city you know the zombie outbreak it's hard enough, but when you consider the fact that animals get infected too, that's what really makes it so much more difficult. Because you got birds flying around and they're actively hunting and wanting to bite people. And you get bit, you're infected. I think rats can carry the disease too. Oh boy. So the elephant there, he sort of acts as a constant threat throughout the course of this scenario. That looks like the city zoo's rear gate. If a rescue team's on the way, I'd better hurry. This is, this is kind of weird, 
But Cindy is always here in this scenario, even if you don't pick her. But if you don't specifically select her, she'll just be standing around and she'll get killed. Like, I don't know if they if that they were trying to tell you something like it's canon that she dies. I don't, I don't know. But I just find it weird, right? Because she's I didn't select her, but she's there. But she's not going to move at all. So I like Kevin because um, his run speed really good. He's like the, he's the fastest character in the game. And so you hold the aim. And when he adjusts his arm like that, you get a, a critical hit every time. It's cool that he has the a gun on him. But the bad thing about it is that it needs special ammo. Now, it's a powerful handgun, so that's cool. But the fact that it needs that special ammunition is kind of what fucks it up. Because... You're not going to find it very often. The cool thing about Mark is that he has a handgun, but he has the basic handgun. So you don't need to find special ammo to, to use his gun. Shit. Ooh, okay. try to open this door obviously i know a little bit about what i'm doing here <laughs> is that other gun still here oh no somebody picked that shit up quick i'm not giving her my other gun i'm sorry babe so there are two ways to get into the zoo You can get the bolt cutter out of that kitchen area over there, or you can get the the mem find the memo over here to actually unlock it. But you got to break the door down. Alyssa could unlock it with her lockpick, though. Shit. <laughs> okay. This might take a while. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, I'll save that other handgun for later. But Alyssa has always been my favorite character. You know, I love strong female characters. And um, that's pretty much what she is. The other female characters in this game are kind of like damsels. Like, Yoko has the lowest HP in the whole game. And she has the slowest walk speed. I think she has the slowest run speed. I said walk speed. She, I think she has the slowest run speed. It's her or Mark. Mark is slow too, but I think it's Joko actually. Shotgun, baby. I don't think we need to go over there, so I'm just avoid that guy. We got everything we need. We're balling. But you either find a pamphlet here or you get the boat cutters out of there. Now, this is one scenario since I've been playing it over the past couple of days, I'll be able to kind of narrate and, you know, explain what I'm doing. But once we get to the second, third and fourth scenario, I'm completely unaware of what's what's to come. Now, I, again, I played these years ago, but it's been so long. I don't really remember. The only thing I remember is the forest. Oh, the only thing I remember is the, is the forest uh, level. Oh, shit. Because that had the axe murderer that was chasing you around. But that's it. You know, out of this whole game, the only thing I really remember was the zoo and the axe murderer from the forest. That's it. I don't know. The, I never found it. Fuck. My bad. I never got got the the the. Uh, I never got the memo. This is why Kevin is so cool, man. Is that the memo the memo over there? I don't think so. They wouldn't leave it there. They was they would definitely want you to go in, right?
A bit of backstory on Kevin, if you don't know. He was, uh, he tried to become a, a member of STARS, but he failed the test. Yeah, I don't know exactly what he did wrong, but uh, his goal wasn't to be just a regular police officer, as you can see. He wanted to be a member of STARS, but he was never able to pass. I think he failed the test like two or three times. <laughs> but what I love about his particular backstory is that, you know, he's sort of billed as being the main character. And But at the same time, the main characters are supposed to be like average Joes instead of like superhero badass or, or rather, like, super soldier badasses, right? But since he's the lead, you know, he has to have, like, some amount of power to him, right? Like, he has to have, like, a, like something about him to make him at least a little bit special. And I think the fact that, you know, he was ambitious enough to try to be a member of STARS, even though he failed... You know, it just kind of shows that he is like a special talent. He just wasn't quite there, right? So he fits in with everybody else because of his normal occupation as a police well officer. A fun while we're at it. But he also fits as a good lead because, you know, for him to be ambitious enough to try to join stars, you would imagine that he was, he's probably above average as a police officer. You know, to even get the opportunity to try to, to try out for stars. He's probably a, at least above average. As opposed to like some of the other characters like Jim, <laughs> right? <clears throat> I think Alyssa too. I, I would also say Alyssa is probably like another character that they probably put forth as like being a just above average. Cause she's a she's a supposed to be like this hot shot reporter. That's not afraid to get her hands dirty. Right. She's, she's, you know, kind of tough. She's a good shot with a pistol, things like that. So I think in particular, Kevin and um, Alyssa were probably supposed to be like the main characters. Everybody else, well, David too is kind of like a, I would say like a little bit above average. He's a kind of a mystery. He's a mystery man. He ain't a regular ass plumber. I know that much. Oh shit! So of course, being in, in the zoo, you're gonna be running to a lot of like animals and shit. Why didn't Cindy die yet? I don't know. Maybe she'll die later. I wonder if there's a way you can make her survive though. Maybe it depends on how long you take. Oh no! Oh shit! She might die here, actually. Yeah, it might be based on time. It's probably based on time. Oh shit! Look at that nasty growth. I think that growth under his stomach is his weak point. And they probably did that to kind of fuck with people who rely so much on the auto aim. Because the auto aim, I think, typically isn't going to hit. It isn't going to hit his um his weak point. Damn, Kevin is so fast. <laughs> I'm really enjoying the speed. Hey, you. Hey. Okay. Hey, you. Did I give it to her? Okay. David got two fucking handguns. I, well, I guess I got to do two. Wait, I gave her mine? I, no, I was going to pick that one up, David. You son of a bitch. Hey, I'm just giving her one. You take this shit. And so as you can see, we're being hunted. Kevin is so fast. I love this shit. I've been using all, all these slow characters. <laughs> Kevin is crazy fast compared to everybody else, now that I think about it. I mean, he ain't Sonic, but you definitely feel that 
that speed. He's such a good character, man. God. He, I think he's such a good character because he's basically a, a warrior character, if you think about it. Like, he's he's meant for, for like, just surviving the, the roughest aspects of the game. Because he can, he can, he's fast, so he can avoid enemies easier than some of these other guys. He has a good amount of HP, so he can survive. You know, he, can, he can survive some, he can take, take some hits. So that's cool too. Okay. I feel like I'm carrying too much shit, to be honest though. I might need to just, I think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop these bullets for now. I think I'll drop them for now. Or maybe I could leave the shotgun. Now nah, I'll take the shotgun. Oh yeah, one thing about this game too is the difference is you can save, but there's a limited amount of saves, right? So you got three on this type rider, there's two on another one. So you get, basically you got saves, but they're limited saves. And they tell you how many you got. And you can save and just keep playing. If you remember in the other game, in the in the first game, um, you could save, but it was more like you were saving to quit and come back later. So you would save and then the game would just cut off. And then if you loaded that save, then that save would disappear until you did it again. But this one doesn't quite work like that. You can basically save at save at certain points, but they're limited. Much like how they would be in a regular game. I think there are shotgun shells down here too. Oh, fuck. Yeah, there's shotgun shells down here. All right, I'll bring them. Yeah, Kevin is, is the quintessential warrior character in this game, if you think about it. He's really just so, just so good. You can't go wrong with Kevin. Kevin. I don't know hey. what you got that I would want. I don't need shit you got, girl. Hey, you. Alright, nah, nah, well, thank, well, thanks for being being uh, helpful. But I'm good. Got my hands full. The lack of inventory, inventory space is always an issue, though. That's why Mark is one of my favorite characters. Because even though he doesn't have, like, the extra space of Yoko, the fact that he had, like, his personal item is a handgun... That means you never have to carry a handgun in his main inventory. You can just carry the ammo. And I feel like really that's that's a pretty important part of what makes some some characters better than others to me. Is like really who has a personal item that makes it less of a problem that you have such limited inventory space, basically. Like, Cindy is one as two, she's one as well because she has the, the herb box, the herb kit. So she can carry, I think she can carry three types. No, she can carry three of every type of herb. So she can carry three green, three red, three blue, and it's all separated from her main inventory, so. She never has to have healing items in her main inventory. Oh yeah, I gotta read these memos too. I forgot, like I'm, <laughs> I'm going too fast. Evacuation order. To the citizens of Raccoon City, this is an important bulletin from the Raccoon City Police Department. Incidents of riots and looting are being reported around the city at an alarming frequency. We are doing all that we can to bring the city under control and quell the riots, but we recommend that citizens evacuate the area to ensure their safety. We are dispatching helicopters to the following locations. Please bring proper ID and assemble here. Place zoo front gate tram terminal. Time today, 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. Tentative schedule. This area will soon be cordoned off 
So civilians are advised to disperse immediately. Please follow all orders and above all, remain calm. Okay. Joseph's notebook. I guess it's only natural to start forgetting things after having been gatekeeper here for 20 years. Take that code to the back gate that they change each month. For example, it's only five digits, but I still forget it. I think the best way is just to set the lock to the first five digits of the serial number written on the back of it. That way, all I have to do is flip the lock over and read the number. That might seem irresponsible, but I couldn't imagine anyone actually figuring out that the combination is written around the back, the lock. The problem is whether or not I'll remember. God, I'm getting old. <laughs> okay, we got part of the, the problem with these um these notes though is that you don't really have a lot of time to read shit because the game doesn't pause when you're reading. And your infection rate is going up the entire time, too. Notice of completion of repairs. The previously reported problem with the flow of electricity within the zoo has been repaired. A test will be run at 9.30 a.m. to double-check the system. The five affected areas are as follows. Elephant stage, gate me mechanism, terrium dome panels, front shutter mechanism, stage lighting system, crane me mechanism. There has been a circuit breaker set up in the office for testing purposes. After the test, power will be routed through normal means. Matthew Reagan making his head. Elephant Keeper's Diary. When I was cleaning up the junk around here, I came across an old BGM tape. I played it to see what it was, and it was the old zoo parade theme. According to Old Man Joseph, there used to be a big elaborate parade in which they outfitted elephants and Christmas lights up until about 15 years ago. He says Oscar was the star of that parade for years. I'll let Lloyd have a listen and he's convinced that it'll be worth money someday. He said I should dub it while I still have the chance. I think he's nuts, but it might be a good idea to copy it for prosperity. Oscar sure has been acting strange lately. He's not sick or anything, but he just won't calm down. He got so excited at feeding time today that he broke part of his cage. Nothing like this ever happened before. Maybe I better have the vet take a look at him. Lloyd's been put on the emblem duty this week, so he'll have to stick around longer than usual. He won't stop bitching about it, but he's got it easy. Really, the dome is close to the front gate after all. Speaking of which, I guess the dome is getting shut down towards the middle of the next month. They're too damn cheap to tear it down, so it'll probably just sit there for years. What a waste. Okay. I have to read the rest later. I don't want to be sitting around when the elephant is active because that means that my partner characters are going to be um, trying, you know, trying to fight him and maneuver around him, and that probably won't work out too well for them. So one of the big fixes that they or improvements they made with this game is, um, <laughs> well, I just fucked that up. Is uh, fighting the, the birds. Fuck. <laughs> Hold up. Fuck. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not doing a good job of showing it off. Admittedly. All right, there we go. Oh, man, I got fucked up by that bird. <laughs> Luckily, we got a lot of healing items laying around, though, so it ain't a big deal. And Kevin's a hardy guy. He'll be all right. But, yeah, one of the big issues with the, um, with the first game was fighting the birds. Because even though you had an a, a auto-aim, the birds, they move so fast. The birds move so fast that um, you really just couldn't keep up with them. And then the fact that they would they would actually go up, right? Like birds are above you. So basically, you would have to use the auto aim and then manually aim up. And they fixed that in this game by making it so that when you aim with the right button, you can press the, I mean, aim with the right shoulder button you can press the left shoulder button to track them, right? Making it a lot easier to kill them. I'm still getting the hang of it because I'm not used to having it. That's why I've been fucking up, but I think I'm I'm getting better at it now. But that was a big improvement over the first game. The birds they were they would terrorize you because even with the auto aim, 
they would just the, their movement is so fast that you would just miss a lot of times. I gotta be careful here because you can get poisoned. Like this whole area, oh, oh fuck, I can always forget about that damn thing. Like this whole area is pretty much just setting you up to get poisoned. You know, I was just thinking, what is Kevin's weakness? Like, he's he's such a, a good character. And I, I just realized it. And he really has two weaknesses. I'll pick these up again once I get this going. I uh, might as well just go ahead and make the whole thing. All right, now I'll I'll grab it later. Okay. Yeah, but he really has two weaknesses, and one is that his infection rate is I think it's one of the highest in the game, and your your infection rate is basically how quickly you get infected. I gotta pick one of these up too. Shit. What's this? Handgun magazine. Damn. You know how much I don't want to pick up this damn metal for and drop bullets? I'll come back and get the shotgun rounds. Shit. Alright, I'm still, I'm still okay. But yeah, his infection rate is one of the highest in the game. It just it just hit me. And your infection rate once it once it hits a hundred percent, you're automatically just dead. I think you turn into a zombie or some shit. There we go. So much easier. So much easier. Yeah, I gotta use that coin to get some. I think it's a lion key I gotta get out of that. Um that office that I just left a little while ago. So we're gonna head back. I wish the other guys would keep up. So I could hand off some of this shit. You know, get them some of this ammo and whatnot. Oh boy. It's the wrong way, right? It's this way. But yeah, his uh, his I think I think his main weakness is he has one of the highest infection rates in the game. So when you play Kevin, you got to be on it. And it is it's balanced because he's so fast too. If he didn't have a, a like one of the highest infection rates in the game, it would be kind of unfair. He would just be op. OP. So with Kevin, as good as he is, like you gotta be very focused on the objective. Cause he just he doesn't have a lot of time to waste. I'm already at 20-24%. And your infection rate goes up quicker. It actually goes up quicker when you get hit. So the more you get hit, it makes your infection rate go up. So that's the other thing too, so. Yeah, I'm playing Kevin. I'm like, what? What's his weakness? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Like, I, like, I, like, I feel too strong, you know. And then I'm like, oh yeah, the inf the infection rate. That's always the big issue with Kevin is that you got to be rolling. That's why I, I would say Kevin probably isn't a good pick for your first time going through a scenario because you don't want that that pressure of of time. Right or, or not having enough time, because typically when you are trying to familiarize yourself with a new scenario, let me see here. You can ask them to use their item. Oh shit, that's cool. All right, baby, I'm gonna give you. Um, I'm gonna give you the shotgun. Yes. David. Alisa! 
Alisa, did I ever pick up the, the shotgun shells I got earlier? Or the ones that were down there? Oh, uh, I'm glad Alyssa is sticking with me. Oh, yeah, but I would say Kevin's other weakness is that is that he doesn't really have, like, a finesse quirk. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he doesn't have, like, like, anything that makes specific situations easier. Like, with Alyssa, she has the lock picking tool, so she can unlock doors where someone else would need to take the time to break it or waste resources breaking the door down. She can open like locks, like lo those lock lockers and shit. I'm not sure if other players can open those by like shooting them or something. Like maybe Alyssa is actually the only one that can open those. But yeah, there are certain like lockers that you that I think you need to have the lock picking tool to open. And that means only Alyssa can open it. And, unless I'm not remembering it right and that you can like bust it open with bullets and brute force. I just don't really remember. <laughs> but still, like, that's, you know, that's one of the cool things about Alyssa, right? Because she has that lot picking tool that can make specific situations easier. Yoko, she's got the extra inventory space. You know, Cindy with just all the, the healing items that she can carry and things like that. But my two least favorite characters in the game are always going to be George and Jim. I just, I just don't like George and Jim. I just feel like, like, now Jim's character kind of makes sense. The way he's set up. Right, he's, he's a scaredy cat character, you know, and, um. Like, one of the things he can do that's cool is he has a coin on him. Let me try to leave anything in here. He has a coin on him, right? And he flips the coin, and it's, of course, it's going to land on either heads or tails. Now, I think the way it works, if it lands on heads, his critical hit percentage goes up by 10. And so every time you flip it and it lands on heads, his critical hit percentage goes up by 10. So it, can go, it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. I don't know if there's a limit, but that's basically how it works. But, fuck. There we go. I'd be taking those hits for no reason, too. I just I thought I wasn't in position yet when I was. But yeah, um but the thing is, so let's say you flip the coin four times, right? The first times is the first time is heads. The second time is heads. The third time is heads. That means that his critical hit percentage is 30% now. But if you flip it the fourth time and it hits and it lands on damn, and it lands on tails, it goes all the way back down to uh, zero or like whatever the, the base percentage is. And so it's kind of risky because the more you try to get his critical rate, his critical hit rate up, the percentage up, the more you risk resetting it back to the base percentage. But if you're lucky, you can get his, uh, his, you know, his critical, his critical hit percentage up very high. But also, um, another thing about him is that did I hit him? Oh shit. I'm gonna just try to make it. But apparently another thing about Jim is that 
enemies are less likely to go after him. Whoa, shit. And he can play dead and shit like that. Yeah, that fucking hurt. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that, that hurt and it spooked me. I don't like dawdling in places like this because, you know, your teammates, your partners, they have a tendency to do dumb shit, basically. But yeah, basically, I'm I'm not a, I'm just not a fan of Jim. I'm not as, not a not a fan of Jim as a character. Message from management: the new front gate lock. Oh, this is why I can't read shit. <laughs> Now, I will say this. I think the auto-aim is a bit overpowered in this game. Just the way it tracks now. I think it's a little bit too much. But I would also... Now, in the case of the birds, it made sense. But the fact that it works on everything... I just realized that it, it, it worked on that uh, hyena, too. Because when he went down, he automatically aimed down to, to at him. Which is it's cool. But I think players should probably be incentivized and rewarded. Oh, for, you know, manually aiming. Like, if I designed the game, I would make it so that if you use the, the auto aim, then there'll, there'll be a damage penalty. That's what I would do. I think that's fair. Alligator. I got two keys. Damn. Two keys. I think there's a rifle in here, too. Yep, yeah, right there. Maybe I'll wait in here a little bit. I'm trying to see if somebody will come in here while I'm in here. I got all these keys. I don't know what to do with it. But George, George, I think out of, everybody, out of everybody, George is my least favorite character. He's he's definitely the most boring character to me. Fuck. Now, what George can do is... um. He's a doctor. Damn. Bitch. But yeah, he's a doctor, so he's able to make pills out of herbs. So you give him herbs, and he can make, like, unique medicines with them. Like, uh, he can make medicines that cure poison, that stop blood loss, that heal, things like that. So it's kind of useful in that, you know, you could take, I think, a green herb and make it into an antidote in, like, an emergency situation. Or take a blue herb, make a healing pill. A red herb, make a hemostat, right? It's just pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. But, now, yeah, I just, I just think George needs a bit more. Like, that's the problem. Like, George just needs something else. Now, the cool thing about this game, too, though, the second one is that they actually did that with the characters. Like, they, they gave each of them, well, not each, but they gave some of them, like, a unique item to go in their main inventory, not just their personal item. Like, Jim has another coin. I don't know exactly what it does, but it does something. The Lion Key. Where the fuck do I use the line? Oh, I think I know. I know. I think I know where to use that at. And um, they gave Yoko like this charm that does. I forgot what it does, but it does something. They gave Alyssa a stun, like a not a stun gun, but a, like a little stun thing, like a stun prod.
They gave David a lighter. He starts with a lighter. So they actually did give some of the characters like like extra, like a little extra. Oh, and they gave George. Oh, fuck. That was so close. <laughs> but yeah, they gave George a, um, what's it called? It's a capsule shooter. So he can shoot capsules or shoot medicines at at his teammates. It's kind of stupid, really, to be honest with you. Like, George is still bad to me. But I do appreciate that. Like, they gave some of the characters, like, an extra personal item just to make them a little bit more unique. You know, I feel like a character like George really needed it, but they didn't really give him anything good. They gave Cindy a band-aid, not a band-aid, but a bandage that I think it prevents her from being able to, to go into a bleeding state as long as she's carrying it. Oh, fuck. Come on, die, bitch, die. <laughs> I don't have the shotgun, so... You did? Okay. Oh shit. The that bitch's body's in the way. Long pole. Okay. I think I might run from the second one. Now what's this? Where the hell is everybody at? I know they're not dead. We've done a good job of surviving. There's a lion that busts out of that truck. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. There's another lion in here, and he can be a little bit problematic. Or is it a she? Yeah, I think it's a girl. I think it's a girl lion. A lioness. Okay. But yeah, I think George is, is the worst character to me. Just being able to make because when you think about it, his main ability is just converting healing items into, into like a different effect. That's basically what he does. And that's just, it's not all, it's really, from what I, from what I experienced, it's not all that useful. But you know, I've actually, I think I remember hearing people vouch for George. Like, but online. Right during online play, I'm not exactly sure, but I could have sworn I've heard people vouch for him. But I think it was specifically with with uh, with um, playing online. His gun on the observation deck. Uh, The power isn't connected. Oh, I forgot to turn the power on, too. I gotta go. <laughs> I forgot to turn the power on. And that's probably why they never followed me. I fucked up there. I never turned the power on. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see if I can just avoid him. I ain't got all day. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> My infection rate is too high to be playing coy. There we go. Yeah, I fucked up. Um, 
I forgot to turn the damn power back on. That's way back at the office. I got to go back there. And I think I was just there, too. I might get a save in when I'm over there as well. I might try to finish this whole scenario in one episode, but I don't think the rest of them are going to be like that because typically the first scenario is the shortest. And also, I'm more familiar with it because I've beaten it twice already. So I know I got an idea of what I'm doing, but. Oh, shit. Okay, I didn't activate them. Yeah, I think that's why they're not following me because they know I haven't made the. I haven't made progress. They're not going to follow me until I turn the, the power on. All right. Yeah, I, I just forgot. It shouldn't be. Where is it? It's not that far away, though. But yeah, I've heard some people vouch for George, man. But they would say it like he's good with a specific team. I, I forgot what that team is. But apparently he's, you know, some people like him. But I've never been a fan of George. Like, I just I could never see it. Jim and George, man. But everybody else I like for sure. You know, I always try to beat each scenario with every character. And I only dread... I only dread playing with Jim and George. Those are the only two. At least with the other characters, like, it really does feel like you have unique strengths and weaknesses that can make the scenario easier in certain ways and harder. But with George and Jim, I never quite feel that. It, just, it, it always feels like... It always feels like I'm at a disadvantage compared to the other characters. You know? Now, Jim... the. I will say this about Jim, you know, him, he's kind of a funny character, just some of the dumb shit that he says. I do like that. Three nine DJ. Now one of the, the changes they made to this game, because, um, in the first game, you know, you had different codes for puzzles and whatnot or, you know, to activate things. But the codes would change randomly. Now, you would have, like, set codes, but it would be, like, three different sets or something. So the code could be, you know, 3, 9, 4, 5, 6, 8, B, J, whatever, right? And so once you learn all the codes typically what you would do is you would just put it like go to that spot and then put them in right just because you already know what all the possible combinations are so just try all three of them hey, what you. she got but they changed it in this game so that the character won't even be able to input the code until you find the paper or the memo that it's written on. So that was basically, basically a way to prevent players from being able to memorize the codes and then just go straight to where you would use them at and make progress. So the game is essentially just, it, it's forcing you to have to figure out the code the right way each time. That's one of those lockers I was talking about too. It's locked with a simple lock. I'm not sure if Alyssa is the only one that can, oh, that's her stun gun too. I don't like a gun to me, but whatever. All right, so the lights are back on. Which means we got a few things we need to do. We can lock the elephant up in the cage. Mm. 
Now, if you remember, they um, I don't know if I showed it, but they they talked about these uh, these BGM tapes. That, oh shit! Come on, baby. Damn, use your shit. I don't know if you could do that in the first game. So you saw me, she was in danger, and I told her to use her first aid spray, which is pretty convenient. Now, typically, they'll do it anyway. You know, most of the time, they don't have a death wish. They will use their healing item if they have it. But I think what they tend to do they try to wait until they're knocking on death's door, which is dangerous. Right? Because if you're sitting on danger, you could get you could get um one shot it, basically. Thanks for talking with me. His face grows sad. No need to close the gate now. So you're supposed to use the tape to lure the elephant to you. I think the reason why Alyssa got fucked up too was because I went ahead without them. So it's, she's probably just been getting her ass kicked the whole time. I think those hyenas and birds respawn. I'm not exactly sure, but I think they keep respawning. You know, I always say it, but respawning enemies in a survival horror game, there are a few things I hate more than that. I hate that so much. But I will say in the context of this game, it does kind of make sense because, you know, there tends to be a, a lot of backtracking. And... I don't think the I don't think the game wants to just populate the area with all the enemies that are gonna be there. Cause then it will probably just be a little bit too crowded. So you play that parade BGM and it lures the elephant in. Or it's supposed to. But yeah, you know, typically I'm not I'm not a fan of <laughs> respawning enemies in survival horror. I, but I will say I think that it does work well in this game. And I cuz I think it's it's also it's limited, right? There's limited enemy respawn. So it's not like just every like every area where you find an enemy and you kill it that same enemy going to just come back later. I think there are like specific enemies that end up respawning in certain areas, like the, the hyenas and the birds. But those lions, for instance, I think you kill them and they, they don't come back. That shit ain't working. <laughs> Did Alyssa still have that shotgun I gave her? Oh, now you wanna show up. Come on, man. All right, so now the elephant is trapped and that also knocks down this man's body. And I think he has rifle ammo and shotgun ammo on him. You would think he would have something more important than just ammo based on, you know, the significance of locking down the elephant. But, mm. I mean, not saying I don't appreciate the ammo, but I just remember when I first played it, I expected him to have like a key item or something like that. 
I know one thing, I ain't going back that way. All right, so let's continue. What did I drop to pick up that tape? I gotta pick it back up. Or did I drop anything? Oh, hell yeah. All right, a few bullets. There we go. All right, what we got on this? Terium Dome. Again, this can be kind of a dangerous area because of the poison, but you know, Resident Evil, they always look out. If there's, I, I, I fall for that every time. Yeah. If there's ever an area where you can get poison, typically they're going to have, um, you know, they're going to have some. Like some herbs laying around for you, so that's always cool. Okay, left the shotgun rounds here. Okay. So that's one of the slabs that we're going to need. Fuck. Did I get, I got poison. <laughs> I got poison at the last damn second too, bro. That's fucked up. Of course, you know, it doesn't always poison you. When you get hit by poisonous enemies, like it's more so like a, a chance, but you know, I got very unlucky there. Like the first hit got me. Lakeside area. Oh lord. You see me trying to get him to go first. Uh, nah, I'm good. All right, every man for himself. <laughs> you can't kill the alligator. He's pretty easy to kill, but ah, shit, karma, instant karma. <laughs> He's pretty easy to kill though. You just, you just gotta stand by the edge of the lake, and he'll try to come out and bite you. But he never goes completely on land. That's the thing about him. He never, like, he never just, for whatever reason, because I know alligators, they can, they can walk on land, but he won't, he'll stay right by the edge. Yeah, he'll stay right by the edge the whole time. And he'll just keep trying to bite you from there. 
And so if you position yourself right, he just won't be able to hit you. And you can keep shooting him. But I think it's kind of a it's kind of a waste of ammo if, if you ask me. Because I think, you know, health is so plentiful around that area where even if you get bit, you're probably going to have... You're probably going to have more than enough... Um, you know, resources available to heal if you need to. Man, I want that damn rifle, bruh. <laughs> I want that damn rifle. But there ain't no ammo in it, unfortunately. Damn, what should I do? This is why you want your people with you. This is one of the disadvantages of playing um, with the AI. You know, you can give them certain orders. You can ask them to help. Alisa! David. It is kind of cool because you can say David. their name and then offer them something. And then they'll the right person will come get it. So you can communicate with them, but come on. they really have a, a mind of their own. Like They're not just just your, your partner slaves. <laughs> And a lot of times, the shit that they do is just not, it's not helping, basically. That's that's the one of the big problems with playing online. I mean, with playing with the AI. The AI just sucks. Let's just be honest. They suck compared to what you could do with a real person. You know, just fucking simple shit like staying together and always making sure that you're making use of your limited inventory space together. But because I can't, I'm leaving the damn rifle. But the rifle, you know, I think it's it's powerful. Fuck. I wanted that handgun magazine, but I'm not sure there's even anything in there. A lot of times stuff gets dropped for a reason. I got bit there too, trying to pick it up, but you know, whatever. All right, so I think Which way is the lion? The lion key. Yeah, enjoy me. Enjoy me not checking the map as I tend to do. Is this it? Yeah, I think this is it, service road. But where is everybody else at? See, this is what I'm saying. Like, we should be sticking together right now. But again, the AI in this game just plumb retarded. No damn help most of the time. Can I go through here? A lot from the inside. I got I got all these shotgun shells, but I don't have my shotgun. I think there's another, I think there's like three shotguns you can get though. In this stage alone. David is kind of an interesting character because he can make, um, he can make MacGyver weapons. <laughs> He can put different items together to make unique weapons that only he can create. So that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, as cool as it is, though. Can you hit me from there? All right, hopefully the iframes from getting sitting, I mean landing, will protect me. Oh my God. I need more than iframes. That motherfucker coming. Okay. That's how you get the second slab. It's necessary. Blank tape. I don't think you use the blank tape in normal mode. Um, 
God. My guess is that when you play on um, the harder difficulty, you have to you have to dub the tape to get access to or to be able to use it. So what you'll see is the differences between like easy and normal and hard mode is that it'll be easier to complete the scenario, not just because the you know less enemies or weaker enemies or whatever. But the whole layout of the scenario would be different in, in like in, in multiple ways. Fuck. So for instance, if it was like a Oh shit. Fuck. Yeah, let's say like there was a a, a two-step process to getting one key, right? On normal mode. He won't auto aim. Okay. Now I can think. But yeah, let's say it was a, a two step process to get one key in normal mode. On hard mode, it might be a three or four step process. So they'll make it like a little, a little bit more difficult, right? So like, you can see here in this in normal mode you get that tape and the bgm is i mean the music is already up there but i'm assuming that in hard mode you got to make a copy or dub it first then you can use it but that's just you know one of the ways that you know they try to make the scenarios more difficult according with the difficulty level selected by the player it's pretty cool you know because normally you would just okay just make the, the enemies tougher right like that's the most basic most basic thing you could do you know you want to make it harder make the enemies harder but i give them a lot of credit you know they really they really did a good job with making the scenarios not only different from each other, but different according to the difficulty level that you select. Because the things you have to do to make progress become harder. Oh, cool. Right? Like there are more, there are more steps needed to complete the objectives. Enemies do more damage. And not only that, but the enemies also, um, wait, what was that? Yeah, they're also like new or different enemy types sometimes. Depending on the difficulty level selected. I think if you run under that, why? So that thing falls on your head for some reason. I don't know why. Without even running, dude, my partners are nowhere to be found, bro. Like that's crazy. Like they, they have just abandoned me. I'm making progress. I don't see why they're not following me. I don't think they fucking died. But you see, my affection rate is at seventy percent now. <laughs> 
which is very, which is uh, very high. Like I, I need to get a move on, but we're at the end here. But it's like I said earlier, I don't think Kevin is a good pick. I don't think Kevin is, is a good pick for playing a scenario the first time. Because you want somebody with a slower infection rate who can take their time and figure things out. You don't want to feel rushed, you know. And, you know, Kevin is, he's the speed run character. <laughs> Pretty much. But I'm comfortable using him because, again, I, I already know what I'm doing here. But I think for the next stage, I'll probably use some, well, I'll definitely use somebody else. Oh boy, look what we got here. And I got no damn help. How the fuck did I miss? He must have he must have eye frames. Which makes sense. It's a it's a big cat. I know you guys saw where the, the dust came up from where I shot at though. It was like it, it the the shot basically went right through him. So I'm assuming that the lion or the lioness has eye frames when it's uh, about to launch that attack. You know, I mean, I ain't tripping on it. That's it's you know, it's fair. It's a it's a lioness. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you had to go toe to toe with a lioness in real life, it would feel like that motherfucker has some eye frame somewhere, <laughs> and and you would have a lot of dead frames. Yo, my team is nowhere to be found, and I gotta go. I would like some damn help. I don't want to fight the boss by myself, dude. I really don't want to fight that. The, the boss at this stage is a lion. So we, we've we been fight, fighting uh, lionesses the whole time here. And so it's only right that the final boss of the stage is a, is a, a alpha male. I wonder why they're not following me though. I I just I want their help. I don't want to fight that motherfucker by myself. But you know what? Y'all don't want to help. All right, cool. I was this close to becoming a member of Stars. Don't forget that shit. <laughs> shit. If Chris can do it by himself, I can do it. I do, I really have no idea what's up with them though. They just. I don't know what happened. I don't think they're dead, though. I don't think they're dead. It's Alpha versus Alpha. This is like the end of um, that movie. What's it called? Into the Cold? <laughs> what the hell was that movie? The one where they, that plane crashed and they had to fight those wolves. There they go. At least Alyssa. Kevin. Fuck. Yeah. You don't like that bitch, huh? Ooh. Alyssa, you got a shotgun with no bullets. <laughs> Pick up some bullets, bitch. Oh, I just picked up handgun rounds. Help. Yes. Hey, you. 
Somebody take these bullets. Take the bullets. And help. David, I know you got bullets, man. <laughs> there you go. He gonna shoot one damn time. Fuck! You sorry sons of bitches. I'm gonna let y'all handle it since y'all... Did she find... Why, why he coming for me? Well, I did say alpha for... <laughs> I did say alpha, alpha male battle. Dude, you got all these healing items out here. You're not using one. Are you slow? Okay. All right, we got him. I don't think that's the sound a lion makes, but I'm not a zookeeper either, so <laughs> maybe I'm the one mistaken. All right, people, great show. <laughs> and great day at the zoo. I'm going to get y'all patched up. I want everybody to look good as we leave. Kevin. What up? David. Thanks. <laughs> we had a moment there. Oh damn, I didn't use my last seven bullets in my um So I call her name, and look, she got it. And I can tell her, use it. Yes. And there we go. We did it, guys. But I'm, I'm mad, because they didn't help me during the, the last stretch. They came at the boss. And even then, they weren't ready. It wasn't a bad part of town, really. Even a good-for-nothing son of a bitch like me might be able to get a few jollies there. I shouldn't have allowed myself to think like that. It was no time to think of having fun. I fucked them that, that melody up. <laughs> All right, that was scenario one completed. So I think next, the next scenario is the subway. We got a D, I'm not surprised. Oh, look at the points though. Damn, why'd I get so many points? I feel like normally I, I get like 300 or something like that. Okay. All right, but that was just, how, how long was that? Like an hour or some change? Yeah, but let's let's look at the um the the special menu real quick before I close out this episode. 
So you could buy like costumes and stuff in the first game, but you had to unlock them first. A lot of them anyway. The cool thing about this game is that they allow you to go ahead and just buy a lot of the costumes. They have new ones, but all the costumes and the NPC characters from the first game, you can purchase right away. That's so cool. And and if you I think if you um yeah, you could transfer your data from the first to the second. So if you already had these bought, then they would be bought in the second one. So that's cool too. But I'm so glad about that because it's hard getting these costumes. It's hard getting these costumes. The reason why it's hard getting the costumes is that they're not available until you find every piece of it in the scenarios, right? And you have these hidden items in scenarios based on the character you're using. So if you're trying to get Alyssa's red dress outfit, you got to find the red dress, the high heels, the lipstick, the whatever, everything that comes with it. And every piece of an outfit is hidden in different scenarios. So you might have to go to one scenario to find two items and then a third, the third scenario to find the other two or something like that. And then on top of that, there isn't even a guarantee that the item is going to appear because the item appearing is based on the layout of the level. So it, it was a bitch, bro. Like there were times where I would play a scenario trying to get an item for a costume and the item wouldn't be there because I got the wrong layout. Crazy, bro. But let's, uh, we're already here. Let's, uh, let's buy some shit. So we got some costumes to play with. I could go ahead and go straight for the sexy Cindy, <laughs> right? The sexy Cindy, but let me see. Mark, Kevin, that Mark one is ugly. I do like Jim's, um, I do like Jim's outfit though. This one right here. I like this one. I forgot what George's is though. I love how the girls have an extra outfit, like a like a sexy, <laughs> like a sexy extra outfit. Um, just real quick, you can buy these NPCs here to use, and they're all just based on the characters that you can already use. But the cool thing about them is that they come with their own like unique items. Right. So even though they have this, this, I, I think the same abilities um, as the main characters, there are unique things about them as far as the items they come with. And I also think that they have like unique health values, too. So that's cool, too. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's episode one. Scenario one. Wild things complete. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And I will see you on the next. So see ya.